Hello, and welcome to another in a series of programs on trichloroethylene, otherwise known as TCE. TCE is an industrial solvent that seeped into the aquifer and uh, came to the uh, wells on the south side, causing uh, health problems to the residents there. That uh, incident occurred in the mid-40s, and in 1981, those wells were closed. As usual, we, on, our, on our series of programs, we try to bring people that are well informed of uh, that topic and uh, that are working together with the clinic in hoping to find out more about uh, any uh, possibilities of health problems associated to TCE. Today we have uh, two guests, two, two guests from the University of Arizona. They are from the Environmental Behavior and Risk Research Lab. Uh, to my left is uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Brian Williams and um, Antonio Robles. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. And we'd like to just have a very informal and informative program today. Okay. I just wanted to start our program by asking you uh, what your interest in El Pueblo Clinic's TCE program was to your research lab. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we're, we're basically um, a community-based lab. Um, we try to use um, sound research tools to basically answer environmental problems in the community. Um, not to necessarily just do basic research to where we generate knowledge, but um, answering real problems. When we do a lot of work with um, the U.S. Department of Defense and Department of Energy and working in often small rural communities throughout the nation, um, being a newcomer here, um, I started looking for more opportunities as a faculty member to work more in the local community. And as such, we had a number of students who worked for us who lived um, in the south side basically and who came to us and said well, this is something that's of interest to us you do environmental research you look at environmental problems um, why don't you come and help us look at some of these issues mm -hmm. and that's basically what sparked the whole thing and and the more we became involved I think one thing that was quite nice is that there was a real sense of community among the people there um, all the many problems and, and so forth, there was a sense of wanting to work together and wanting to work with the university to help identify other problems as well as potentially solve some of the existing health problems. Mm -hmm. um, what were some of the concerns that uh, some of the uh, people that came to you Um, cancer and, and what have you, a lot of chronic disease. And people start to notice this and they start to um, bring it to the attention of the public as has been the case here. Mm -hmm. um, but students that we had that lived in the area, you know, this is, this is one of the oldest Superfund sites that's been here I think since 1982, um, said they would bring uh, the things to our attention such as nobody's really looking at this problem anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody seems to care anymore. And it wasn't so much that the actual illness that we would see, but in fact that there was a lack of good research. Mm -hmm. um, we knew that there had been uh, some research that had been done in the past, but um, and we felt that there, there's always something more to be done. Mm -hmm. And when a community wants something done, I think it's very important to address mm -hmm. their concerns and needs. I think you're absolutely correct. And um, Antonio, uh, you're a resident of the South Side and a student uh, in Dr. Bryan's uh, lab. Am I correct in that? Yes, I am. And uh, I believe you were instrumental in making him aware of some of the things that were occurring on the South Side. And your questions piqued Dr. Williams's interest. And as a result, uh, one day you walked in to the clinic where I work at El Pueblo and, and that's how we met. Can you give us a little bit about um, a history of your concerns and, and the type of work you're doing currently? Yes, um, well I lived in the 
in that area, right, uh, since 1970. And actually, uh, I had a personal, my father ended up um, being diagnosed with lupus. So then <clears throat> I ended up going to uh, gain my BS at the U of A and I was currently, a, I'm currently a master's student um, in public health in mm -hmm. the graduate college under, actually um, under Dr. Williams' supervision and I was working for the county at the time as an environment specialist and when I got into the lab, he, um, I actually started asking him, you know, there's the super fun site with TC that's been going on and uh, we actually need to go down there and see what's going on and um, my brother-in-law being the director of that El Pueblo, he actually um, put us towards, pointed us towards yourself and um, asked us, you know, you'd be the key mm -hmm. person to talk to down there and see what we can do to actually help, you know, the situation down there, especially knowing that there was no um, continuing health care, the mm -hmm. barriers that are down there yeah. with the people and, um, and knowing what had been going on. And currently at the lab, what I do is I help them do a lot of the, the program planning mm -hmm. um, at the lab and starting to get uh, new research areas mm -hmm. um, started for our lab. And then once we start, I actually help them do with some of that analysis and some of this, just the day-to-day -day supervision that goes on in our lab. You know, going back to your conversation, you emphasized the word help. And that to us was um, very a key word. Uh, we've been doing uh, health uh, work or work for the uh, patients that come in under the TC program for mm -hmm. six years. And uh, we've been gathering uh, doctor-reported information. Uh, this is not self-reported diagnoses mm -hmm. that we have now. These are doctor, actual doctor diagnoses that they're, we're uh, gathering at the clinic, where we have 800 plus patients under the program. And um, I always wanted to find out from someone uh, here in Tucson um, what their interest might be. We needed help. Um, in coming to us and kind of extending their hand um, to uh, let us know what we have found so far mm -hmm. and, and wh what's important to the community. Mm -hmm. And so when you walked in my office that day that you came in, I was so happy to have met, to meet you. And, and uh, we started on a very, very good note. Knowing, first of all, you know, Antonio was a Southside resident that was very important, and and your interest, doc, Dr. Williams, in mm. the clinic itself was um, just perfect. It was perfect <laughs> timing, and we're glad that we're collaborating. Can you just give us a little bit of of what your future plans are mm. in working in collaborating with our clinic, sure. please? I think <clears throat> one of the things um, when you start out an investigation like this, the most important thing to keep in mind is how important collaboration is and how much everyone brings to the table. Mm -hmm. um, the science, quite honestly, has not caught up with the problems. And one of the reasons that communities are often frustrated is the fact that they have a lot of unanswered questions. Right. And often the science, as you've seen, can't always answer those questions. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we feel very strongly about is to come into the community not as scientists, but as part of that community. No, to me, this is not a South Side problem. This is a Tucson problem. Mm -hmm. um, and go into the community, find out what they want us to work on, mm -hmm. um, and to work with them collaboratively. Specifically, what we're interested in is looking at the information that already exists. Mm -hmm. We know that there's going to be limitations associated with that information, but it's a starting point for mm -hmm. us. And we can look at We're not going to have all the answers. Mm -hmm. but you're certainly going to get more information than if you don't look at it. Exactly. And, and there are things in there that we obviously can look at and be helpful to patients, mm -hmm. be helpful to the community, as well as look at future directions for protecting the health and, and reducing environmental exposures in that area. Mm -hmm. um, well, well ask, let me ask you, uh, Dr. Williams, uh, why is it difficult to identify the causes of, of suspected uh, environmentally related diseases? Well, one of the things, we don't always, for example, we don't even have tests for some of these things. Mm -hmm. um, it's difficult for us to even to go in. We do, one of my friends, I, I can't uh, take uh, credit for this quote, but he would, he would always say, we don't have a magic tricorder. We can't go into the communities and say, this is what it is. 
um, there are many areas in where the science is quite limited. Um, the second thing is we have to look at these things retrospectively. We're often in a position where we suspect a problem, but then we have to go back and reconstruct information. Mm -hmm. Looking at hospital information, or hospital records, for example, that may be quite limited. Um, a, a third area is that the endpoints, the diseases that we look at, um, often don't happen for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And we, people, for example, don't get cancer just like that. And so it's very difficult to develop causal relationships between an exposure and the actual disease. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that's very important for the community, the perception of disease is just as important as the reality. If I'm concerned about it, then it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And so the science itself is limited, but one of the things that we, have, we work on is making sure that the public understands the limitations of the science. Mm -hmm. There really is no magic bullet, as it were, but there are some questions we can answer and some that we can't. Mm -hmm. And we have to work with the community to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, or the, the final thing is that there's often not a lot of cooperation, as I'm sure <laughs> you've experienced. Mm -hmm. um, these things often involve a number of federal agencies, local groups, and so forth, many of which it's very difficult to get not only to cooperate, but just to communicate mm -hmm. on many occasions. Mm -hmm. And so we don't always know what one agency is doing versus another. Sometimes we duplicate our efforts, mm -hmm. um, and, and other times we just, you know, we just do the wrong thing. And so um, part of what we and, and we approach it is to try to get communities to drive the process, not agencies. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that we know that there'll be limited science, but we also learn from each project that we do. We learn from the mistakes, we learn from the limitations, and, and quite honestly, this is a very exciting time for environmental research because we've made great advances. Right. Uh, for example, in biomarker research, we're starting to learn and starting to be able to identify things um, environmental exposures at very early stages now, mm -hmm. uh, in particular with biomarkers of susceptibility. We can look at the susceptibility to disease right. and precursors um, in general. And that's very exciting um, because we don't have to wait till someone's ill to be able to look at these things. Mm -hmm. so. And with the number of years that have gone between the time that the exposure occurred to the time that the wells were closed, and we're talking mid-40s to 1981. Mm -hmm. uh, will you still be able to like backtrack on some of these things? Uh, how do you plan to do your research at the present or mm -hmm. from the past? How are you? Well, part of what we're going to be doing is we're going to learn from what research has been done. Mm -hmm. um, there, has, there have been some studies, some epidemiological studies in the area. We've looked at those. Um, and there's, there's a lot to learn from those. Um, the second thing is, is that we will, I think, the the data coming from the clinic provides us a nice kind of fresh start mm -hmm. uh, to be able to look at a little bit more solid type of information. Mm -hmm. um, the third thing I think is very important for us to do is to set up some sort of system of monitoring mm -hmm. so that we know that there will always be limitations. We're going to have a lot of unanswered questions, mm -hmm. but um, if we look at these things prospectively rather than retrospectively, um, we know a lot more. If we can mm -hmm. follow people over time, mm -hmm. if we can link exposure to illness mm -hmm. more, right. more um, readily, then we'll, we'll know much more um, mm -hmm. so that we can avoid or perhaps intervene very early mm -hmm. um, before disease actually occurs. That's, cool. that's, that's good because environmentally speaking and, and uh, with uh, respect to all the problems that the environment is creating, Antonio, um, you know, we're, we need to st stay on top of the issue, would you agree? And uh, perhaps, as uh, Dr. Williams is explaining, that we're going to move forward with this environmental problem because this is an, an unending subject or topic. Um, how are you going to be addressing that uh, along with Dr. Williams? What? Well, I think, what we, I mean, like you said before, I think we're going to have to look at what's the data that's available um, to our knowledge, some of the, the data that some of these agencies have put out have not involved, actually, the Hispanic population that's been there in the South Side that was exposed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one thing we're really going to have to look at, what really is happening 
there in the south side, there in, in the plum area, uh, where most of us have been exposed, you know, all our lives. Most of us grew up there um, and see what's going on and actually, you know, get a, go on from there with the data and actually follow some of these people that are, that have been exposed, you know, from childhood as myself and some of, you know, my family and friends and so on and colleagues actually that live down there. Some of the, some of our uh, staff members that are down there, that's where, you know, it came down. It's like, you know, what, what are we going to have, you know, what do we have, um, you know, to show if something actually is going to happen to us. And there's where most of them came to myself and to Dr. Williams. And uh, there's why I told him, you know, prior um, collaborations with the university, people have come in, mm -hmm. um, they've done some stuff but left. They they never got completed. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I was very adamant about telling them, you know, we're going to go in there, you know, let's stay there for the long haul and see what really, I mean, Let's look at the changes we can make. Well, thank you for, for doing that because uh, that means uh, a great deal of, um, that lends a great deal of respect to the work that we're currently doing at the clinic and to the community as a whole. Um, I think that uh, this issue is not going to go away very soon. Mm -hmm. But in the, in the interim, we're already, um, you know, trying to help uh, this very negative um, environmental matter that happened to, to the south side and it's people like you that are going to uh, continue that work for the clinic in the future and we look very much forward to to working with you and and you teaching us and <laughs> educating us more on the subject well, we also learn quite a bit from you and you know we never mm -hmm. claim to be the experts in your community and uh, you know I, I would never come into a community uh, professing to know what your concerns are mm -hmm. and one of the things that's nice about this is that it truly has come about as a result of people from the community mm -hmm. approaching us saying here's what we think is the problem and and can you help us and can you tell us where you can help us mm -hmm. and uh, you know we we found some things that we thought were quite disturbing honestly mm -hmm. we looked at the uh, the CDC reports the Centers for Disease Control through the um, Agency for Toxic or ATSDR. What did you think of those reports? Well, we were concerned because, oh. quite honestly, if you look at the baseline reports, there isn't a single person of Hispanic origin mm -hmm. um, that are included in those. And there are, there are reasons for that that are, are honestly um, part of the realities that we deal with in these types of studies. but. Quite frankly, I mean, I, I think it's inexcusable that we're not looking at the Hispanic population and potential concerns, and certainly looking at this over time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether or not we have had a problem in the past is one thing, but we certainly have a responsibility to make sure nothing happens again. Exactly. And, and I think that's what's most important. You know, I grew up in, in coal mining country and, and in, in areas where it was arguably environmentally devastated mm -hmm. and I know what it's like mm -hmm. um, to be in a position where you have environmental problems and there's no one speaking up for you mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important and that's part of what a, a university should do in its community is speak up and be advocates for the, uh, the folks. We're, you know, we're going to be a college of public health pretty soon and the prevention center and I think one of the things that's very crucial for us mm -hmm. is to meet with the local community, find out what the concerns are. We have we have tremendous resources here available, Absolutely. and you have tremendous resources to us. We have wonderful students who mm -hmm. do incredible mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, it it's a you know it's a good cycle. We yes, turn it out is. you know Antonio will graduate and he will do well, I'm sure, and he'll probably go back into his community and be a, a major resource for that community. Yes, and he's already starting on, on the right track and we're very proud of Antonio for mm -hmm. being in that uh, scientific uh, arena and for doing the research. And also uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Lebowitz is mm -hmm. uh, your director. Um, Dr. Lebowitz is a friend of the clinics mm -hmm. and um, we haven't uh, been seeing each other as often as we should, as we should but now with you all are coming to um, work with El Pueblo Clinic. I'm sure we're going to be meeting sure. again. 
I think it's important. I mean, Dr. Lebowitz, for example, and Dr. Abrams um, have done work in the past. Yes. Um, I think there's a lot that we can learn from it. Dr. Uh, Lebowitz is my mentor, actually, mm -hmm. um, at the university, and we can learn quite a bit. We, we also do a lot of national work that helps us understand some of these problems. These problems are certainly not unique to Tucson. Right. Um, you know, we're doing work looking at the effects of disparities, mm -hmm. uh, socioeconomic disparities, um, and its effect on health status right. and in underserved communities. What I mean, we know that poverty is the cause of a lot of illness and right. that, that disadvantage is a part. Um, but the other thing is we have to keep in mind that not every community is the same. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, I look at the South Side, for example, and one of the things that really makes me feel good about is there is a true sense of community. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I think part of that the clinic has been very responsible mm -hmm. for because they've been, they've been a major, they've served as a major component mm -hmm. of, or facilitator of that type of yes. community feeling. Yes, and, and from the very beginning when the problem started, um, the community came together and has uh, stayed. We're very tenacious in mm -hmm in trying to get to the root of um, what uh, re what occurred in Tucson. And, and it's educational at the same time. Um, and it has harmed people's health. Sure. And we are addressing mm -hmm. that uh, currently through the TCE program at mm -hmm. El Pueblo Clinic. And so now with the continued um, science um, field that you're going to be placing there, mm -hmm. uh, we're very pleased and we're very proud that to be uh, collaborating with you and and um, we welcome you, really. Uh, we're yeah. very appreciative of the work you're doing. What do you think of that, Antonio? I think, <clears throat> think that's great, especially with everything that's happened in the past with the clinic. Um, I think, um, actually, with um, Richard Barker's help, the director mm -hmm. of the adult public clinic, just mm -hmm. all the programs that are available there, mm -hmm. and you know, the clinic also being on site. Mm -hmm. um, people can just can go there and get more information, especially at the TC clinic about mm -hmm. the issue that is going on. Um, I mean, I, I commend Dr. Williams for actually getting the interest to go down there, especially because we were, you know, nationwide in other communities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, you know, gave a concern to me that he wanted to do something locally. And I told him, well, this is as local as you can get. Absolutely. And this is, um, yeah. this is something that's been around. and. Um, I just hope, you know, I know that, you know, some positive things are really going to come out mm -hmm. of our research. The, the student, I mean, the, the student influence here can't be understated. Um, I mean, it provides very unique learning opportunities for our students. Would you invite more students or more young people to participate Certainly. in your... Certainly, and, and not just students who live and in the area. where could they call you, uh, Dr. Williams? Um, they can call me um, at our main lab number, which is 626-3362, and speak to our administrative assistant, Yvette Flores, mm -hmm. um, and contact us there, or they can actually contact us on our website, mm -hmm. which is ebrlab at... Oop, I messed up. <laughs> it's http um, colon colon www.u.arizona.edu backslash EBR lab. Just call. Just call and we'll <laughs> give it to you. <laughs> Just call. Yeah. And uh, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up for today. Uh, we really thank you once more for coming in to present your program and for working with El Pueblo Clinic. We're glad to to be connected to the University of Arizona. Thank you for listening, and we will be back in a couple of weeks. Thank you.